like this, and then I'm going to, I, I forgot to hit the start record, so now we're recording. Here we go. All right, so taking a look at this, the first thing I'm gonna notice is that there are three shapes. So in doing three shapes, I'm gonna label them. So I'm gonna call this shape one, I'm gonna call this uh, shape two, I'm gonna call this shape three. Okay, so three shapes. So to find the total area, I'm gonna find the area of each individual shape. So for the first shape, right, that is the area of a triangle. So it's gonna be one half, right, the base times the height. Now I'm including units here because we're gonna be talking about units a lot today when we talk about dimensions and stuff. Notice how it's centimeters times centimeters, right? That's centimeters squared. So let's take a look. Uh, I'm gonna have half of 12, six, six times 15. So we're gonna have 90 centimeters squared. So again, right, area is gonna be squared because it's the second dimension. Okay, and we'll talk more about dimensions in a little bit, but that's the area of our triangle. Next, I'm gonna take a look at um, the air, I'm uh, sorry, two. I'm gonna take a look at the area of our half circle. So I have the area of a half circle is gonna equal one half, right? The area of a circle. Now, the problem here is that we don't have anything marked up here, but we do have, right, this rectangle. I should have put these here to let everyone know it was a rectangle. If this is six, that's six. But the radius, right, is only half, right, is only half of the diameter. So if this total is six centimeters, then that means our radius is gonna equal three centimeters, okay? So knowing that our radius is three centimeters, I can say that area of a half circle, which is also called a semicircle, is one half times pi times three squared. So I'm gonna go ahead and simplify this down. So I know three squared is nine, and so I'm gonna have half of that. So it's gonna be nine halves pi, and then centimeters squared. So this is my exact answer, right? That's my exact answer. And then in my calculator, I would go nine halves and then pi. And I would get, oops, that just tells me the exact, I would get this is approximately, right? Um, well, you know what? I don't want the approximate right now because we're gonna be adding them all together. So I'm not even gonna write that down because that might mess us up later, okay? So this is my exact answer that I'm gonna, right? We don't wanna round um, to, to do that. And remember, we just use chat to uh, ask questions, right? Uh, about what's going on. So we don't use chat to just say hi to everybody, okay? All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to find the area of the rectangle. So that's just gonna be length times width. So it's gonna be six times 12. Okay, and six times 12 is gonna be 72. So I got 72 centimeters squared, always again with the units. Okay, so I found the area of my triangle area of my rectangle, area of my semicircle. And so to find the area total, right, I'm gonna take my first area plus my second area plus my third area, okay? And when I do that, I get my area total is approximately, and then this is where I'm gonna round. So I have 90 plus nine halves pi plus 72, and I'm gonna type that all in. So I get it's approximately 176.14 centimeters squared. And right, the reason why it's squared is that all of the areas we have are two lengths multiplied together, right? So it's a length times a length. It's centimeters times centimeters, which is centimeters 
squared. So I'm going to go, uh, just stop here for a second. And does anybody have questions or comments about what just happened? Uh, is there anything I can do to help you guys? What do you guys think? Okay. So if you guys are doing fine, that's great, right? So this is composite shapes. So there's definitely going to be uh, something like this on the final. So you guys are going to really want to make sure that you can take a look at a composite shape, break it down into smaller shapes and find the area. Okay. That and we're going to be using this with volume too. So it's important that you guys know how to do this because we're going to be doing volume with this next. Okay. So the next one, it says find the radius if the circumference equals 28 pi. So I'm going to go, okay, circumference equals uh, 2 pi r. So I'm going to combine these two, right? So 28 pi equals 2 pi r. And we want to solve for r, right? So we have to remember this is 2 times pi times r. Nice. So again, uh, I'm glad that you got your wisdom teeth removed, but uh, chat is not the place to be talking about that, okay? And this is your, this is your last warning. Okay, so we don't use chat to, we use chat to ask questions. Okay, and congratulations on getting your wisdom teeth removed. That's gonna hurt for a while. You're gonna be a chubby bunny. All right, so we have two times pi times r. So I can just undo multiplication with division. So I'm gonna divide both sides by two pi. Okay, right, the pi's go away, the twos go away. Over here, pi goes into pi one time. So the only thing I have left is two into 28 and that is 14, and then I'm gonna make sure to add my units, and that is meters. So I have 14 meters equals R. All right, does anybody have questions about this? Because this is also something that's gonna be uh, on your final exam, right? Can you uh, use those equations and manipulate them and solve for different things. Okay, so no one has questions about this? All right, wonderful guys. So we're gonna be doing uh, uh, some new stuff with volume. So uh, to set that up, um, I'm gonna need a new piece of paper. I used a lot more paper than I thought I was going to. So to do stuff with volume, so we're gonna be doing 11.5 and we're gonna be talking about the volume of prisms and cylinders. Oops, cylinders. Okay, that's C Y L I N D E R S, cylinders. Uh, it turns out prisms and cylinders are very, uh, very much alike. The only difference between a prism and a cylinder is that a cylinder has a circle in it. So if you're like, whoa, what's, what's the difference there? But we'll go over that in a second. But I would like to, we're gonna have a really cool lesson today. And I'm, I'm really sorry, uh, uh, normally if, uh, during normal years, I have this really cool lesson and I wouldn't been able to do it if I was teaching from school either because I just, all my materials are locked up in, in storage somewhere and I have no idea where they are. So, um, because Old Main is being rebuilt. So let's just, I'm gonna try this a different angle, but let's first talk about dimensions. Do, 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 right? So um, this lesson today has a lot to do with dimensions and a little bit of calculus. Now, we're not gonna like do do calculus. We're going to just talk about the concepts of calculus and how they get where we hear because volume is a calculus subject. Um, how you solve for it is calculus. So. For, so you can tell all your friends like, uh-huh, calculus, what? Okay, first dimension. So the first dimension is length. Okay, that's how we define the first dimension. So if you say something is uh, seven feet long, that's the first dimension, okay? Uh, so a length is the first dimension. Okay? And then we have the second dimension Okay, that is area. Now, and this is gonna be a constant theme uh, of what we're gonna be doing uh, today, is to go from one dimension to the next, you can think of it as 
adding a piece, but that's not really what a dimension is. So a lot of people just think like, oh, area is two lengths, length and width. But it's really not because it's length times width. And so to think of this, and this is going to be a constant theme with dimensions, let's say you have a length a b okay let's say you have a stick now let's say that stick has some paint on it and what we're going to do is we're going to roll this uh the stick this way now when we roll it this way it's going to have a resting point a prime b prime and what's going to happen is since it has paint on it it's going to paint this area Okay, so as we roll this stick with paint on it, it's going to leave behind with behind it an area. And that is really how these dimensions work. The first dimension, when moved, creates the second dimension. So, and, and this holds true with dimensions. To get from one dimension to the, men the, the dimension above it, it's movement. So if this stick were to move from here to here, we've now created area. Okay, and this is the underlying principle of what we're going to be learning about today with prisms and cylinders. This idea that if you're in one dimension lower, you move to another point, and thus you've created one dimension above you. Okay, now of course that sounds weird, right? But uh, I want you guys to know today there's going to be lots of mind-blowing stuff today, okay? Lots of mind-blowing stuff today. So second dimension is area. We take length and we move it. So then that means for the third dimension, we're going to take area and move it. And what we're going to get for the third dimension is volume. And we're going to take a look at this today, and that's what calculus is. Cal well, part of cal there's three parts to cal main parts to calculus, right? And one of those three parts is volume, right? It's the idea of area in motion, okay? Which is which is really cool, right? And like, and like, isn't that crazy to think that in calculus there's only really three parts? There's limits, derivatives, and integrals. And this is going to be an integral, how we get volume, okay? And we'll talk about that. I'm going to show it and break it down to you with very little math in it, okay? So the idea is if you have a two-dimensional surface and you move it, you get volume, okay? And, and I'll show you what that means. But before we get there, I always think it's fun. Does anybody know what the fourth dimension is? What dimension do we get when we move volume around? Anybody know? <laughs> No, this isn't this isn't Netflix. It's not the upside down. So so you have to remember that's an incorrect use of the word dimension. That's a that's a, a different universe or a parallel universe, right? When the upside down. So that wouldn't be a dimension, that would be a universe. Parallel. Right? It's happening at the same time. Okay? So the fourth dimension is time. Now think about this, this should make sense, right? So here's me and you see me moving, right? But really me moving, isn't that just the passage of time, right? So, and if, so, if I haven't made you believers in that yet, what happens if you take a picture? That is you freeze time, then you just see me frozen and I don't move, right? So time is that fourth dimension. When three-dimensional objects move, that is time. What? You guys are like, this is crazy, right? This is crazy. And then like you start like breaking it down, be like, well then is time not in length and area? It's like, what? Yeah, it's pretty crazy, right? And and you can spend yeah, you can spend a lot of time. And if you if and if that's where your mind is blown, be ready to have your mind blown many more times because we're gonna be doing a lot of that today. Okay, so the fourth dimension is time. Now also remember length can move within time. It's just several dimensions below it, okay? Now, if you really want to start blowing your mind, just remember that the, like we live in the third dimension, right? And we can only perceive things one dimension below and one dimension above, right? 
like if we started talking about the fifth dimension, you guys would be really confused because as humans, we can't perceive the fifth dimension. And we can talk about the first dimension, but does it really exist? Right, you know what I mean? Like we kind of have this this idea of that, but like we can approximate the first, right, as a distance, but like it's more of a concept, right? And we're gonna get into this concept of length because I think a lot of you guys memorized what numbers are and you never really questioned it because you're an elementary school kid and you're like, oh, my elementary school teacher loves me, you know, but like, what is a number? So let's talk about that a little bit today, okay? And I'll blow your minds a little bit, okay. So let's get into this idea. Now, so in, in a second here, I'm gonna show you guys a little demonstration. Let's talk about this idea of uh, area moving to become volume, okay? So I'm gonna switch my camera here, okay? And what I'm gonna show you is a playing card, okay? So this is a playing card. It is the five of clubs, okay? So, not a magic trick math isn't magic that's what makes math really cool it's not magic right you guys see this now I'm not gonna hide it though that would be really cool if I could be like now check behind your ear and then all of a sudden like you pull out the five of clubs I mean that would be pretty cool but I'm not that cool okay so what I want you to focus on is that this is a mental demonstration so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to to be a little adventurous you're gonna have to be a little abstract because the things we're talking about are concepts and they're not that's all they are so you have to remember you guys think numbers are real but numbers aren't real numbers are totally made up okay the only thing that's made up is one and zero and everything else is built off those two numbers right two is just two ones three is just three ones but what is one okay so I want you guys to, to go down this journey with me, okay? We're gonna go do a little uh, a mind game. So, when you look at this card, what two-dimensional shape do you see? Type it in chat. Okay, when you look at this card, what two-dimensional shape do you see? Okay, a card isn't a shape though. So what shape? It is a card. It is two-dimensional, what shape? What shape do we see? What what do we call this shape? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Now we're yeah. Now we're okay. So it's a rectangle. Okay. So we see a rectangle. Okay. Well, so let's first start with. Remember, we can perceive things in the second dimension. But is this a is this a rectangle? No, of course it's not a rectangle. Why? Because it has thickness. A rectangle doesn't have thickness, right? So this isn't a rectangle. Does that bother some people? We call it a rectangle, but it's not a rectangle because a rectangle is two-dimensional. This card is not two-dimensional. In fact, when you write on a piece of paper, the ink has thickness. So it's just a representation of two dimensions. We can perceive the second dimension, but we truly can't understand the second dimension. Just like we can perceive time, but like we, we aren't in time. So we are the third dimension, okay? So we can perceive it though, okay? So that gives us a problem because I want to think of this as a rectangle. So in your mind, right, do you guys see, see that this card has some thickness, right? So we need a thinner rectangle. So in your mind, I want you to take a really thin knife, like you see like those cook shows on, on Netflix, and I want you to cut, I want you to start shaving this card and I want you to start getting it as thin as you can in your head. You can close your eyes if you need to, but in your head, you're gonna start shaving this card. And I wanna know how thin can you get it? Right, so you're shaving it, you're shaving it, you're shaving it, little, little shavings are coming off, right? How thin can we get this card? Okay, and I know some of you science guys out there Right, like a little break. Ah, so I got the I got the realist in here. So I agree with you, right? So so you're very realist. Like there's got to be there is a a minute. There's there's only so far we can go, right? Because then the card would cease to exist. Right. So so we called you we we call that applied math. Okay. Right. That's a very practical math, like real world math. Right. Like hey, the card's gonna like just break down at some point. Right. 
But we have to remember calculus isn't applied math. Calculus is theoretical. Okay, so I need your imagination. How thin can we get this card? So then I'm going to have some scientists. They're going to be like, well, you can't go, you can't go thinner than one atom thick. So we'll cut it down to one atom. So this card is just one atom thick. Well, then I'm going to be like, well, atoms are made of proton, neutrons, and electrons. Okay, so let's cut it down so it's just a layer of neutrons. All right, well, uh, what about quarks? Okay, let's cut it down to just a layer of quarks. Okay, and then we can get into conversation about that. But this conversation we just entered in is a conversation about infinity. Right? Like how small, how thin can we make this card? How close to a rectangle can we get this card? And the answer isn't a number. The answer is an idea, and that idea is infinitely small. Okay, do you got, are you guys with me? So it's not a number, it's a concept. And the concept is we're gonna get this infinitely small. And the idea with infinity is think of how small it can be. And as soon as you think of it, that's not infinity. Because infinity means it gets, it gets getting smaller infinitely. You can't think of it, right? Because as soon as you think of a number small enough, that means you stopped because you got to keep going smaller. Okay. And that's, that's a weird thing to think about. Okay. So this card is infinitely small. So if we make this card infinitely thin, it's now a rectangle. Are you guys with me? All right. Here's another rectangle. Okay. They're both infinitely small. Now you guys ready for this? I just put them together. How thick are they? And this is, right, you guys see like, well, well, if they're infinitely small, then they're still infinitely small, right? Okay, all right, so they're still infinitely small. All right, so let's, uh, let's get some more cards. So here's three more cards, okay? They're all infinitely small. So how thick are they? Still infinite? Okay, what if I take a stack? Still infinitely small? And this is where people, they break down and they think this is stupid, it doesn't make sense. And it does make sense. And the reason why you feel it's stupid and it doesn't make sense is because you have a false understanding of numbers. And this is your false understanding of numbers. This is infinitely small and it's one, one card, two card, three card, four card, five card. So numbers make sense there because physically I'm holding that many cards, right? If we're playing Uno, a little kid can play Uno and tell me I'm holding four cards, right? They can count them. But where the real tricky thing is, is what does one mean? How many numbers are there between zero and one? And the answer is there's an infinite. So it turns out that in a practical sense, one thing is one. But one also measures an infinity. You guys with me on this? Okay, so here's your card, it's infinitely small and it's an area. So if I start stacking them up like this, I now have an infinite stack of area. An infinite stack of area H high. You guys with me on this? And if I wanted to find the volume, I would just add all of the areas together. And that's calculus. I just explained to you the integral. You have a stack of infinitely small areas. How high is that stack? Uh, H high, right? We're measuring the height of that infinity because that's what a number does. It's totally made up. Right, we just made up what one is. So I'm gonna call this a height of one. My units are correct, it's one correct, okay? And I'm counting the stack of infinity. So then all I have to do is take, okay, here's the area of this one, plus the area of this one, plus the area of this one, plus, but if you were gonna do that, wouldn't that take forever? Because there's infinite of them, right? 
So rather than add each one of them up, just say the shortcut for adding is multiplying and say, I'm going to take the area of this and I'm going to multiply it by how many infinite ones I have. And that's my height. Guys, this is calculus. This is what's called an integral. Okay, now here's what the really cool part of this. So I have a stack of cards, right? And they're infinitely small. Okay, and I want to find the volume for this. Well, I just take the area, we, this is called the base, the area of the base, and I multiply it by the height. Because that's how many infinite layers I have. Yeah, it's like layers. You got it. Now, here's the cool part. You see how they're stacked like this? Well, what if I put them at an angle like this? Does that change the volume? You guys see how it's slanted now? What do you guys think? Is that going to change the volume? And the answer to this is, have I taken any cards out? No, I haven't taken any cards out. So a slanted is the same volume. Okay, this is called Cavalieri's principle. Not that you guys care, but that's what it's called. It's called Cavalieri's principle that volume doesn't depend on its straightness. Now, another example, if you guys are like, well, that's confusing. Think of the leaning tower of Pisa. Okay, did it lose volume when it tilted? No, it's the same thing, but just tilted, right? So I have the same amount of cards. I slant them like this. I still have the same amount of volume because it's the same surface area, right? And it's the same amount of cards. Okay, so this is calculus. This is an integral. An integral is the sum of infinite areas. Cool, right? You guys thought I was going to do a magic trick and I'm just doing math, okay? All right. Now, I got some other books too, right? So here's like a long one. You guys see this, right? And if I go like this, you guys see how it's like little thin pieces of paper? So if I found the surface area of this and I multiplied it by the height, I would get a really, right? I would get the volume of this stack. Right, and that still works because I'm assuming infinite slices, even though they're not infinite slices. How cool is that? What? Because the numbers already count infinity, right? One to two is counting an infinity. One is counting an infinity. It's an arbitrary number that we all agree one foot is this, right? But there's an infinite numbers in one foot. Don't worry, we can do more mind blowing. All right, so that is volume. It is a, do you guys see how we have a two dimensional surface moving, moving and creating volume? Pretty cool, pretty cool, okay? All right, so let's, let's talk about this. So let's go back to taking some notes. So how do you draw, so let me give you a quick demo on how to to one way to draw a three-dimensional object, okay? One way to draw a three-dimensional object is to start with the two-dimensional object that you have. So we're first gonna look at prisms. Now we don't need to know the definition of prisms, but a prism is just a two-dimensional shape moved to get a, uh, a three-dimensional shape, okay? So let's take a look. So I'm going to have a rectangle, okay? And this rectangle is going to be my base, okay? There's a rectangle. So again, I'm just trying to show you guys a really easy way to draw a three-dimensional shape, okay? There's lots of different ways to do it. You don't have to do it my way, okay? I don't want you guys to think like there's only one way to do things, okay? So I'm going to go ahead here, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this with parallel lines, parallel congruent lines. So to make this 3D, I always start with the bottom right, and then I just draw a line back. Now, what's important is this line, I'm going to draw the exact same line parallel to that line in the upper right corner, and then the upper left corner, I'm going to draw that same line like that. Okay, so I'm drawing the same line parallel, each one should be parallel. Then you connect them. Oop, didn't do a very good job, but again, I'm not grading you. And then to, for a 3D effect, 
in the bottom left hand corner, go ahead and do the same thing, but make it a dashed line. Okay, and now we've created a 3D looking thing. It's not perfect and you know, yours doesn't have to be perfect either. I'm not gonna grade anybody on how well they draw, but this right here is called a rectangular prism. Okay, because the base is a rectangle and then it goes back like this. Now, something that's gonna be confusing is that height means something different here. The height is the distance between bases. So the height is the distance between bases. So just like I had my stack of cards and we said, okay, the height is the distance from base one to base one. Well, I would still do the same thing if I was holding the cards up vertically. This is a base, this is the other base. The height is considered the distance between them, which is kind of confusing. So it's not height height. Height, when we talk about volume, is the distance between the bases. And that can be confusing. So make sure we don't confuse that uh, with what we're doing, okay? Uh, let's do one more of these and then we'll do a prism. Uh, we'll do a, uh, not the prism, we'll do a cylinder. So let's say my base is a right triangle. Okay, I'm going to use the same drawing method to draw a, a prism with a right triangle base. Start in the bottom hand right. I'm going to make a segment. I'm going to make the same segment parallel up here. I'm going to connect them. And then I'm going to do the same down here like this. Okay, and it's just one way of drawing a three dimensional shape. Now, this shape is going to be called a triangular prism triangular prism. Again, the height is the distance between the bases. Now you're like, what are we doing with this? I just wanted to show you how to draw the pictures and get them down, okay? So that's a prism. The next thing we're gonna look at is a cylinder. Now the reason why we're doing cylinders with prism is that a cylinder basically is a prism. It's just, it, get, it gets used so much that it's got its own name, right? And that's kind of how it works in math. Like as soon as like everyone's using it, it gets its own name. So the only difference between a cylinder is that our base is a circle. So now my circle I know looks a little uh, like more like an ellipse, but the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm gonna draw a line straight down like this. I'm gonna do a half circle and then the other half of the circle I'm gonna make dotted. Then you got a cylinder. And I'm sure you guys can draw better cylinders than I can, but that's not the point. That's not the point. Okay. The point is, is that this would be our height, right? So we got a base, right? This is our base height. And then it goes to our other base. So it'd be like having circular uh, cards, right? You're just, can you guys imagine that we are stacking chips or money, right? But how thick is the money? Infinitely small, right? Can you guys imagine it's just layered? Okay, so we have prisms, we have cylinders. Okay. So what we're gonna talk about next is, okay, mathematically, how are we gonna find the volume? now? You're right, we're not in calculus. And so we're not gonna do calculus every time, right, we want to do this. We're just gonna have a formula. But the formula comes from calculus, okay? It's the integral of the base, 
Okay, so you take the area of the base and you integrate it. But we're just gonna give you the result to use and then you guys are going to just practice doing that, okay? And then uh, hopefully you guys go on to take um, calculus and you learn all about it and you can be like, oh yeah, this stuff is way cool, right? Okay, all right. So let's, let's talk about it. Okay, let's talk about it. <laughs> all right. So, volume, volume of prisms and cylinders. Okay, and remember, it's not prison, prison, it's prism, like you just had a tasty cookie, like prism, okay, not prison, prism. Okay, volume, now the way that I remember this, and it's gonna seem violent, but volume equals area of the base times the height, and I think of it as bash, because these are shapes that you would kill someone by bashing them. Now, this is gonna seem unnecessarily violent right now, but after our lesson next time, you guys are gonna be like, oh, okay, this makes sense why he's setting this up. Okay, so I like to think of volume as bash because these are shapes that you're gonna bash with, okay? So what does this mean? The V stands for volume. This is the most important part. The B stands for area of the base. And H stands for height, which is the distance between bases. Okay. So you got volume equals area of the base times the height. Now remember, it's not height, height. It's the distance between the bases. So now we're gonna use this. And I'm also gonna show you how units work out and why we're in the third dimension. Because we're gonna have an area, which is unit squared, times a distance, which is the first dimension. Okay, so let's go over two examples. I got 10 minutes, I'm gonna be able to do, uh, shoot, I wanna do three examples. So this has gotta go quick. So we're gonna find volume. Okay. So I'm gonna start with a right triangle and I'm gonna make it 3D. And I'm gonna label it as four centimeters on the base of the triangle, three centimeters as the height of the triangle and two centimeters as the base of the triangle. I think I'm gonna to get to two examples today, but that's okay. Now, this is just extra, but this is a triangular prism. Triangular prism. Jeez, crap. Focus so much on the math lesson. All right, triangular prism. So, first we want to identify the base, right? The base is a triangle. Okay, the base is a triangle. And can you guys, can you guys just imagine, right? like this triangle, do you guys see the triangle in there? How it's just moving to the back, right? You can see like the triangle just going into the, into the back there, okay? So we got a triangle moving to the back. We then know that volume is gonna equal area of the base times the height. And until you guys memorize this, I would always make a note. This is area of the base. Notice how it's a capital B. It's capital B, not lowercase b. This is the area of the base, okay? So what does that mean for us? Well, what shape is the base? The base is a triangle. So the area of a triangle is one half the base of the triangle times the height of a triangle. And that's what's so important, guys, is that capital B changes depending on what shape we have for the base, whether it's a triangle, rectangle, pentagon, circle, right, octagon, it doesn't matter what shape it is. 
this area just changes. Okay, now notice how this is confusing, right? The little b versus the big b. This h is the height of the triangle. This is the distance between the bases. So it gets confusing with notation. Okay, so you're just gonna have to remember, right, that this is the height of the triangle, this is the distance between the bases. So let's go ahead and fill everything in. So it's gonna be one half the base of the triangle, and I'm gonna add units, because I wanna show you guys something. Three centimeters is the height of the triangle, and the distance between them is two centimeters. Now, notice how the units work out. The units always work out with everything. Look at this. So my area is one half four times three. Well, half of four is two. Two times three is six. But notice how that's centimeters squared or centimeters times centimeters. Do you guys see how I get centimeters times centimeters? So I have an area times a length. So I get my volume equals 12 centimeters cubed. That's it. Okay, notice how my volume is the what dimension? The third dimension. So volume is the third dimension. That's why area is units squared. The volume is units cubed. Okay, because how many lengths did we multiply? One, two, three, three lengths. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, we're really short on time, so I got to keep going. We're going to uh, try to get one really good one in here before you guys leave today. Does anybody have questions here about what I did? Any questions about units, dimensions? Um, don't have time to talk about time travel and multiverses today, but maybe some other day we can talk about time traveling and multiverses and, and all the physics of that. Because remember, deep at heart, I'm a physicist, not a, a mathematician. Right, I feel like that guy in Star Trek. I'm a physicist, dang it. Not a doctor. Wait, no, the other way around. All right, here we go. Now, remember with the stack of cards. So I gotta, this is, has to be our last example because remember with the stack of cards, I said, we're gonna add all, we're gonna multiply the area because multiplying is a shortcut to adding, right? So we're gonna add all the, the area of all these infinitely small cards. Well, then we said, well, if I tilt it, Right? You guys see how it's tilted? If I tilt it, it's the same volume. Okay? So let's do one that's tilted. Okay, so it's tilted. And let's say that this is four centimeters and the height is seven centimeters. And again, this is just a stack. Oof, my circles got bad, guys. This is just a stack of circles, right? So volume is gonna equal area of the base times height. So this is area of the base right? Area of the base. Area of the base times height. We don't read it as capital B times H. So I'm running out of time, I know. So the base now is a circle. So the area is pi r squared and then the distance, the height, right? Okay. So to solve this, I'm going to have volume equals pi times four centimeters squared times seven centimeters. Notice how we have that area with unit squareds and then we have a distance, okay? So uh, four squared is 16. So I have 16 pi centimeters squared times seven centimeters. And then seven times 16 is gonna be 112. Sorry, I had to go into like robot mode to like compute that. So 112 pi, and then centimeters squared times centimeters is centimeters cubed. Now this is our exact answer, right? 
Now I'm gonna warn people again, in your calculator, do not approximate pi. There is a pi button in every calculator. I would go 112, then the pi button, and I get our volume is approximately, oops, 351.86 centimeters cubed, right? So now we know how much cheese whiz we can fill this slanted container with, with right? Okay, I can get about 351.86 cubic centimeters of cheese whiz in that bad boy, okay? Because who doesn't want more ways to store their cheese whiz, okay? So guys, um, I'm running out of time. So I just wanna say before you guys leave, again, tomorrow's a practice day. Seniors and everyone should be there. Non-seniors are gonna be working on this assignment, right, 11.5. Seniors are gonna be working on their review for their final, because you guys are gonna have a different final. And then um, it, I, I hope you guys know that uh, I have office hours in the morning from 8.30 to 10 a.m. So that's it for my lesson. So if you guys are at home, you can log off. If you're at school, you can log off, but you can't leave until the bell rings, okay? I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great, wonderful day. You guys are amazing, wonderful people. Never forget it, right? You guys are the best. Take care. I will see you tomorrow. Don't get blown away today. Bye, guys.